Hello. Okay, uh, let me introduce the title of my paper. Okay, uh, my paper is entitled Academic Arguments Employed in Malay Research Articles. Okay, uh, the title of my paper is Academic Arguments Employed in Malay Research Articles. This paper explains an integration of genre-based knowledge and evaluative stance in the context of academic arguments. These arguments are used in the conclusion sections of Malay research articles. For this purpose, it draws on an analysis of the features of appraisal theory by Martin and Rose. 2003, and an analysis of communicative purposes within a genre analysis framework by Swells 1990 and 2004. The major research questions addressed in the present study are, first, what are the rhetorical strategies used in Malay research article conclusions? in terms of uh, rhetorical moves and steps. Second, in constructing the writer's stance, how to attitude and graduation options co-articulate with each other to produce the rhetorical effects in research question one. The methodology of the study. Now, the selected research articles from the field of psychology a total of 20 research articles, the conclusion sections are considered. Okay, these articles were published between 2009 and 2014, and they were randomly selected. Now, the Malay articles were selected from two journals, which include psychology articles. Okay, these journals are namely Social Humanica, Journal Pendidikan Sains Social dan Kemanusiaan, and Ibangi. The analysis framework of this study is a move analysis of the research article conclusions um, based on Swell's notion of genre analysis, Swell's 1990 and 2004. Now, this is uh, one of the frameworks. The next framework is um, appraiser theory. Okay, the appraiser theory by Martin and Rose, 2003. Now, this framework is used to identify patterns of attitudinal choices that display the writer's stances, the force of these stances, and their engagement options. However, for this presentations and this paper, the engagement option is not looked into. Now, the next page will show figure one, which has been produced or reproduced from Martin and Rose 2003. It shows the compositions of these elements. Okay, now the, uh, the appraiser theory, according to Martin and Rose 2003, consists of three elements, okay, namely engagement, attitude, situations. And these three elements have their own um, categories or divisions as shown here. Now the findings. Overall, Malay research article conclusions show the presence of three moves. Move one. Summarizing the study, move two, evaluating the study, and move three, providing a deduction. Now, these three moves and their respective steps occur cyclically rather than linearly or in a composite manner. Now, is in past studies, okay, some of the examples of uh, these past studies, uh, as stated here, okay. Um, shows that uh, rhetorical moves or steps okay, are 
highly cyclical in such articles. Malay conclusions are more inclined to use move one summarizing the study. Uh, that is 85% of the conclusions. Um, okay, use this move, move one, compared to the other two moves, namely move two, evaluating the study, 70.6% of the research uh, article conclusions, and move three, providing a deduction, okay, found in 55% of the Malay research article conclusions. Writers of Malay research article conclusions used attitude strategically in arguing or evaluating for their own and past research in one. That is to summarize the study, move two to evaluate the study, and move three to provide a deduction on their findings. Now, the realization of the attitudes in these three functional moves presented in appendix. Now, a closer examination shows the low force graduation is often found in instances of counterclaiming, such as to evoke a small amount of past research carried out on a particular research area, or to evoke a limitation of past or present studies by accentuating a point. For example, Hanya memfokuskan, only focus on as found in M2, example M2. Okay, right. The occurrences of low force graduation to realize the above rhetorical effects in Malay conclusions are congruent with Malay conclusions employing uh, the evaluative move two, uh, which is evaluating the study. Now that is, move two is a functional move which contains these two rhetorical steps, namely indicating a limitation and providing a counterclaim. The following exemplifies the above phenomenon. Okay, now, uh, as I mentioned just now, Okay, Hanya, okay, um, is found in M2, has been coded as evoked appreciation under valuation, encoded in graduation low focus. Okay, and uh, these statements has the communicative purpose of providing a complaint. All right, so this is uh, the English version. Now in the Malay corpus, M2 below shows that evoked instead of inscribed attitudes are used when taking a stance in relation to the findings of the study. For example, kebanyakan remaja hamil luar nika mempunyai. So most teenagers who are pregnant out of wet lock have Okay, wow, well, M5 and M8, uh, which uh, will be shown okay, in the following page, shows that an overt and amplified attitudinal stance instead of an implicit one is used when commenting on an aspect related to the field as a domain. For example, in M5, when the writer comments about the global issue of sexual abuse, for example, penderaan sexual dan tidak mustahil berlaku, or sexual abuse and it is not impossible to happen. Okay, now here, kebanyakan has been coded as evoked appreciation, valuation encoded in graduation high force or quantity, yeah? Okay, in the category of quantity. Okay, kebanyakan uh, okay, means most, okay, in English. And uh, here we can see that the writer attempted to present overall findings. Okay, another example, M5, as I mentioned just now. Okay, 
um, penderaan seksual. Okay, has they call it as inscribed appreciation under the category of composition. Okay. Uh, this um, English equivalent means or is okay uh, sexual abuse. Okay. The sexual here, all right, is coded as inscribed appreciation under the category of composition. Okay, now this is another example, M8. All right, uh, drastic here has been coded as uh, inscribed appreciation and category of composition. So uh, in the Malay corpus, writers also use both the evoked and inscribed attitudes simultaneously when taking a stance in relation to move two. That is when the writers attempted to evaluate their study by indicating significance as found in the example M15 and providing an explanation as in M11. The following shows the examples. Now, the utamania, okay, means uh, especially has been coded as evoked appreciation okay, in the category of valuation. Uh, bending, okay, uh, means important, yeah, has been coded as inscribed appreciation, okay, and in the category of valuation. Right, so as we can see here, both evoked and inscribed appreciation have been used by the writer to indicate the significance of his or her study. So this is another example. Okay, Ibu Bapu Yang Bai, good parents. Okay, Bai has been quoted as inscribed appreciation okay, in the category of valuation. Mampu means able to, has been quoted as evoked appreciation in the category of valuations. So here again, we can see that the writers used both the inscribed and evoked appreciation to um, communicate with the readers by providing an explanation in move to step five. Now the above findings show how rhetorical meanings are achieved and reinforced by writers as a result of core articulation of the linguistic resources employed according to these authors. Now in other words, evaluative stance in the form of attitudes and force of the stance in the form of graduation jointly produce the rhetorical effects in both conclusions. or to be more specific yeah, uh, in the Malay research conclusions. Now this should allow writing instructors to make informed pedagogical decisions that are grounded in the understanding of the rhetorical strategies to guide Malay ESL students in producing acceptable and comprehensible academic writings. Thank you.